guys. Hello. 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 <clears throat> hey everyone. Hi. Hello. Hey everybody. <clears throat> All right guys. So I clicked on three minutes early because I want to make sure we start on time today with our CEO Lunch and Learn. I know that we got started a little bit late yesterday. Hey, Geeky Breezy, what's up? Hey guys, grab your lunch, grab your, your notes, <laughs> notepad or your phone, whatever you're gonna be taking notes on. I would say grab your book, but of course you won't have your book until Tuesday if you've pre-ordered. If you haven't already pre-ordered, you want to make sure you do, you guys. Um, 90 days to CEO, which starts shipping on Tuesday. Actually, guys, let me, um, give me a second. Let me turn off my office ringer so it doesn't interrupt our session. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just going to wait one more minute because I did say this starts at one o'clock and we are on a little bit early. Thank you for being on time. Um, we're going to be diving in today into topics that are coming from both chapter nine and from chapter 10. So we are here to talk business. Okay, all right, so less than 60 seconds, just giving a couple more people time to join. And you know what, early birds are gonna get all the information. If people gotta catch the replay, then they have to catch the replay. All right, um, also for the three of, um, for those of you who submitted your questions in advance for today's session, um, I have chosen three answers um that i will also be answering at the end of today's session as well and for those of you who are here live if you do have any business questions that are specifically related to today's topic which are about the fundamentals of basics that you need when you are starting a business at least the fundamentals that i think are extremely important um, then you can drop your questions below using the little question marker thing and it'll pop up at the end of the session okay all right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, it is exactly one o'clock on the dot. We are all about being on time, on time. So first of all, welcome. Happy Friday. I'm like, wait, is it Friday? Yes, it's Friday. Happy Friday, everyone. Um, hopefully you guys had an amazing and productive week. Um, today's topic, as discussed, is we're going to be talking about the three fundamentals that are important for everyone that is starting a business now I've talked to you guys about this before and you know I'm just gonna emphasize this again when it comes to business I believe that there are certain foundational elements that everyone needs to know and understand I do understand that in nowadays um, society of business everyone is more so focused on the pretty things the flashy things but to be honest you guys with my over a decade um, of experience being an entrepreneur, I can tell you that the businesses that have been able to last the test of time are the ones that have owners or CEOs that really took the time to put, um, lay the proper foundation, oh, I'm reading, to lay the proper foundation for their business. So I'm gonna go through with you my top three today. Now, again, my book, my new book, 90 Days to CEO, show you guys my copy if you saw my I know it's funny I wrote my book and yet I still highlight like crazy um, that's the biggest thing you know for me when I'm reading something um, even if it's my own book I like to highlight the gems you know in there the aha moments um, so highlighter sticky notes this is literally life um, but anyway so 90 days to CEO before we dive in just to remind you guys my book is releasing on Tuesday um, so this Tuesday, so just a couple of days from now, you can pre-order this at 90daystoceo.com or you can also just get it on Amazon, get it on Prime, 
and it's also available on barnesandnoble.com as well. Um, as we discussed yesterday, for those who didn't um, join yesterday's session, this book is structured in four parts. Um, for, <clears throat> excuse me. This book is structured in four parts. What was extremely important to me was making sure that I did not just inspire you because I think it's wonderful that my story and my journey has been such an inspiration to others and I more so wanted to, after inspiring you, make sure that I gave you guys the fundamental tools that you actually need to do it your Self. So whatever it is your business is and one of the biggest questions that a lot of people ask is you know Does this um, apply to um, service-based businesses as well? Yes, I will definitely save the live guys. I'll definitely save it um, But this book you guys it applies to service and product-based businesses even though I have a product-based business So I do share in the beginning my journey and my beginnings um, how I build my business behind the scenes that no one knows about um, I talk about all of the grow up to glow up section, which talks about the the years that I went through in business. I would say years three through seven when it really, really got messy um, and all of the lessons and important things that you should know to avoid some of the mistakes that I made during that um, time. Then we talk in part three about understanding how to take your passion to turn it to your purpose and then part four which is what we're going to be touching on a little bit today <clears throat> gets into the business foundation now this is when it gets serious so chapter nine and ten you guys is like i'm taking you to business school literally so everything that you need to know to start a business even if you have limited or no capital like i did i started my company allocate naturals with a hundred dollars then chapter nine can help you with that i take you through step by step i also know that a lot of people it's so easy to become overwhelmed because a lot of people i keep hearing say i can't start a business because i don't know how to do it i don't know how to get started well Duh, I got you. That's literally what chapter nine is about. It tells you step by step and it also breaks it into 30, 60, and 90 day plan so you don't feel overwhelmed and it actually just walks you through the process. Um, and then chapter 10, which we'll also touch on a little bit today as well. Chapter 10 is called lock and key because when you've actually now opened a business, there's a whole whole new world as to how you actually run and operate it so that's what we talk about in chapter 10 with lock and key so if you have if you have purchased business books from you know other people and you're like wow okay this is great this is fantastic but it's missing a little bit I put so much in this book you guys I don't think anyone can say after reading it that they've missed anything all right so now let's go ahead and get into our top three fundamentals business fundamentals um and like i said again the book is available on amazon and barnes and noble okay so let's talk about um the importance of building a proper business foundation so that is step one that is my tip number one is you have to build a proper business foundation now the reason that i say that is this and i'm going to keep throwing this out there you guys I want you to understand that there is a difference between owning a brand and owning a business, okay? Totally different. When you own a brand, it's, you know, your brand also typically has IP, you know what I mean? So you may have, um, you may say, oh my gosh, I came up with this business idea. Boom, all right, good. The business name, that's the idea. Then you hop on social media, you secure all your domains. Okay, boom. Then you're like, man, I'm gonna go get my website. Great. Or you, some people don't even do that. They just say, okay, now I'm gonna get a logo. Boom. Now I'm officially a business. Wrong. What you have done are the first couple of steps with establishing a brand, which branding is also an important part of business, but you didn't, you don't have a business. So a lot of people, and I'm, I'm not trying to say this in, a, in an awful way, but there are a lot of pages that you may even see on social media or a lot of online websites and things, and people are calling themselves a business. No, you are a brand. You might be a successful brand, but you are not a business because you aren't even registered. You don't even have the proper foundations you don't have all your tools in your toolbox everything on the outside of the house looks pretty but everything on the inside is hollow and your foundation sucks which means as soon as the wind blows you're gonna fall apart so 
I believe that you want to make sure you are building things that are going to be able to last. Now, some businesses, to be honest, are not going to last, last the test of time. Some things are not going to be here 20, 30, 40 years from now. Everything has a different life cycle when it comes to a business. But regardless, you want to build something that is able to last and also able to survive without you being involved in it as well. So, you know, we'll talk about that because that goes into automation. All right. So building a proper business foundation. So a couple of the things that you want to make sure you consider, and these things I actually teach you about um, in chapter nine as well. So I, I flush them out in more detail in here. Um, have you thought about a, what's your revenue model? Okay. So I have a revenue model cheat sheet that's in the book, and it's also available at a secret URL on my website um, that you can only get with the book. But I actually give you a template as to how to create a revenue model for your business. With every company, you guys, that I've ever started, that's one of the first things that I do. Of course, of course, after establishing, you know, my why and all that good stuff and, and you know, what product or service I'm going to be providing, I always look at my revenue model because... Are you running a business or is this a hobby okay there's nothing wrong with having a hobby hobbies you do the work and you really probably maybe make money from it maybe not kind of sort of maybe you're not really worried about paying bills because you're just doing it for fun because you love it but if you are trying to be a ceo and i'm saying ceo because that's on the book if you're trying to be a ceo and you're trying to operate a business businesses are generating revenue they're making money and if they're a really good business, then they're also profitable. But that generating revenue doesn't just happen with saying, okay, well, this is what I'm going to sell and then I'm going to just throw it out there. No, you actually should actually build out a revenue map for your brand or for your, I'm sorry, for your business. So you know exactly what you how what are you going to be using to make money and how much money are you trying to make with each of those things and then being able to break it out even more to understand how much of your services or products you would need to sell on a weekly, daily, monthly, whatever basis in order to reach those revenue goals that you have set. So having a proper revenue model and also understanding as well your um, sales and distribution strategy for your business will also go into that. But at least on the basics, we're talking about foundational wise, you wanna have your revenue model. So we're right now, you guys, we're talking about building the business foundation, the biz important foundational things that everyone needs to understand in business. I am not your marketing and, and, and Instagram coach. That's not me. I am very business focused. I am extremely someone that believes in um, that the fundamentals in business are still important, even though, you know, it's a lot quicker for us now to launch businesses and brands. But again, it's about establishing something that is going to be able to actually make money and also something that is able to actually last and not just to be a fad. Okay. So the next thing is making sure that you have a basic business plan. Now I talk about um, in chapter nine, I actually talk about business plans um, and I also tell you about just the basic information that should go in a simple business plan and then when you actually need a more expanded business plan. Um, so we talk about business plans, make a note, it's gonna be on 224. Um, but, <clears throat> so pretty, oh, excuse me, I talk to you about why you need a business plan, what needs to go into your business plan and then when you need to actually have an expanded business plan, okay? Um, let's see here. Because if you don't plan, you guys, like it's it's just like anything else. Like I always say, you know, some people want to go out on a road trip and they're willing to just get in the car and they're super adventurous and they're like, I'm just going to drive until I get somewhere that I want to be. Well, when it comes to business, you're usually spending money every day to operate that business. And so getting into getting into business without having a proper plan and having a clear direction about where you're going, you're going to waste money, you're going to waste time, you're going to cause yourself frustration. So planning is essential. Some people think that a business plan has to 
be just a formal document for someone else. When I think about a business plan, I'm thinking about how important it is for the CEO or the leader of that business to have that plan laid out. And it also is important because as you go on to later hire people, I mean, when you usually start off, we're solopreneurs. I mean, some people do have the capital where they're able to launch with a staff, but you're a solopreneur in the beginning. So while you might be clear on what the vision is or the direction that your business is going, not everyone is gonna be clear. And so as you bring people on with your team, whether it's your first, your cousin that you're hiring, your friends and family, which by the way, in chapter 10, I also teach you how to work with family if you hire them for your business. I'm telling you, I didn't miss anything in here. Um, and some rules that you have to establish because I have a lot of family that works in my business as well. Um, but yeah, so you, you really want to make sure that you have a business plan and making sure that you also know how to apply that plan. So still on the building a proper business foundation, um, your proper business registrations, you guys. Now, I believe in total in here, I went through, so in chapter nine, opening up shop, we talk about some of the type of business registrations that your company needs. And I'm, and I'm, I'm telling you guys this, there are so many people, again, that are on here that say that they are running a business and if you were to ask them what type of reg what type of registrations do you have for your company they're going to look at you like what oh i trademarked my name oh well that's good that's excellent that's actually a good thing but um what other business registrations do you have and they'll be so so confused you guys like we're not out here trying to wing it like i'm trying to make sure that anyone who is trying to learn from me and is trying to follow my 90 days to ceo plan again understand what needs to be done and understanding when they need to do it because you don't have to do everything in the beginning you guys when you're first setting up your business but you have to at least understand what type of business registrations are needed within your specific industry these still apply even if you're running your business from your house, from your kitchen, from your living room, from your bedroom. There are still certain business registrations that you're going to need from the first time that you launch. And not understanding this, not having a clarity as to what these things are, doesn't mean then that you will not be held liable or responsible if someone comes after you because it's like, oh, I'm sorry. I, I still run my business from my apartment. I didn't know that I needed that registration. So what? Boom, there goes a fine. So you want to make sure that you are educating yourself. So having your proper business registrations are important. We talk about registering business. We start in chapter nine on page 233. And I go through um, I go through industry registrations with you, federal registrations, um, state to state registrations. I go through all of the online and legal registrations that you need. So registrations, you guys, is nine pages. So I go through all of the registrations that you need here. Um, and again, it starts on page 233. I know you guys like me to tell the pages so you know exactly how to notate it for when you get your book next week. All right, so the next thing in building a foundation, so we're still laying the bricks for the foundation, you guys, are accounting systems, okay? Now, Again, when it comes to the accounting systems, oh, I didn't notate what page the accounting systems were. Did I, did I? No, that's legal systems. Um, when it comes to, okay, accounting systems, page 264, okay? Still in chapter nine. Excuse me. So I remember when I first started my business, again, I was running my business from my two bedroom apartment, um, which now is a, we're running from a 6,500 square foot manufacturing facility. So that's where I am right now, Allocate Naturals headquarters. But when we first started, we were in our two bedroom apartment. Let me just tell you that the last thing that I was thinking about was anything with accounting systems. Because first of all, when I thought accountant, I was like, oh my gosh, that means a lot of money. I don't have money. I'm just trying to, you know, make products to, to put money back into the products and just trying to make sure I keep a roof over my head. But let me just tell you, there are things that, again, I wish I knew that I could have been doing to at least, that were little to no cost, things that I could have been doing to at least still track my accounting and my cost and everything that I was putting into the business in the beginning 
that would have made it a lot easier for me when we had to hire our first accountant or even when we had to hire our first bookkeeper or when we started even just doing bookkeeping on our own. So it's really important to remember you guys don't have to shy away from things. I want you to make sure you learn and know as much as you can. It doesn't mean that everything is going to apply to you in the stage where you are now. But at least when you come upon it, it's like, oh, wait a minute. I started selling products now through my website or I started selling products now through my Etsy page. Oh, man, I remember Rochelle said in the 90 Days to CEO book, that there's a hack that I can use. I can register on here and get this and this and this. So when I need an accountant or when I have to file my taxes, I have everything. So again, you guys, your, your accounting systems and your financial systems are things that you can establish in the beginning to little to no cost. And I also talked to you about when it comes to scaling up, how what we did when we did the DIY, what systems we use, what tools we used, and then when we actually hired our first accountant, here is what went wrong and here's what went right. So I tell you all of that in that section. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And then just making sure that you have your other legal protections, um, especially with IP for your business as well. So those to me are the basic foundational items and that is step one, okay? I know, tip one, eh, told y'all. I come with a lot of information. All right, so. Step two, we're gonna talk about, which is a lot simpler, just making sure that you establish an operational plan for your business, okay? Um, I know that a lot of people think that it's just like you just open shop and then it's like, wow, I have a business today, this is great. Guys, we're operating. How? Like, how are you operating? Who is doing what? So it's important to make sure that you understand what are the tasks that your business, what are the things that your business is going to need someone to do on a daily or weekly or monthly basis, you brain dump it. Here's all the things that I need to do to keep my business going or to, to keep it operating. And, and also we have a operation um, category and then you also have a growth category um, because we'll talk about, we talk about that a little bit in the book um, with making sure that you are working on your business to grow it and scale it and not just being working in your business, which is gonna keep you stagnant. Hence why if you're already a business owner and you're watching this and you feel like, man, I've been running my business for three years now and I feel like I'm not growing, I'm not going anywhere, I got you. Chapter 10 in this book is for you and also chapter three through six will also be helpful for you um, in that stage as well, okay? But you want to make sure you are clear on what tasks are going to be needed and who is going to do them. Even if in the beginning it's you, it just makes it really clear when you have a structured operational plan. Breaking things into departments. I know that a lot of people when they start a business, it's just like you think small. You know what I mean? And it's always like, man, well, it's just me. So I'm just going to just do it and just operate and just go with the flow. No, I want you to always think about bigger. I want you to always be thinking about where you're trying to go with your business and not just exact, not just where you are. So you always want to operate on that next level that you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to hire someone, hi, Iconic Beauty, welcome. If you're trying to hire an employee next year or whatever, then you're building the foundation for that now when you are your only employee. So there are certain systems that you're going to need to put in place in your business. You want to name all your departments like yes I don't care if you're your own accountant at the beginning you still have an accounting department and what needs to go into that okay marketing what goes into that department um, HR human resources listen human I was my first HR director of my business my first employees were of course myself okay then my husband Damon who's my business partner <clears throat> and then we hired my grandparents who to this day still work with us and it's amazing. So my grandparents were my first two official hires and then we we hired our first like employee, employee that wasn't a family member. And I remember sitting there and putting my first HR plan together. And I was like, oh my gosh, there needs to be a way that they clock in and clock out. <gasps> How am I gonna pay them? What does that look like? How does payment work? Do I pay them straight? Do I pay them through a system? Can I afford that? What systems would I use? Like literally everything flush. What should, what should they sign? 
knowing what documents people need to sign when you hire them, even part-time or as a contractor, to protect your business and protect your legal entities. A lot of people don't know, they don't know what's needed. They're not thinking that far. And it's like, you guys, these are all things that are important. Job descriptions, responsibilities document, disciplinary action plans, all of that. I teach you all of that. I literally teach you all of this because no one taught me this in the beginning. And it took me so much time, so much stress, so much headache trying to research and still not coming up with answers because everybody on social media, when they're talking about business, all everybody's talking about is you got to have a popping logo. You got to make sure your colors are pretty and your Instagram page flows beautifully. Okay, all good and dandy. I get it. And that is an important part as well. But I need us to understand that if you are running a business and not just a brand, these are the unsexy parts of things that are going to be able to set your business apart and make sure that your business possibly can last longer than others because you have laid the proper foundation, okay? So um, having your HR systems, um, also, <clears throat> excuse me, also making sure that again, you build those things into your business and because we're not about being overwhelmed. That's what I said to you guys in, um, let's see if I can show you. So when I say I give you a 30 and a 60 day and 90 plan, 90 day plan, just this particular plan we just talked about, which is your HR plan, that is actually on page 402 of my new book, 90 Days to CEO. So 90 Days to CEO, you guys, my book releases on Tuesday. That is coming up Tuesday, February 11th. Make sure after this live, you hop on Amazon and pre-order 90 Days to CEO. You can get the hardcover or you can get the paperback. I promise you, if you're a current business owner, this is going to change your life. If you are thinking about starting a business and you feel lost, then this is for you as well. It's going to help you to get started and to feel confident. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, so this is the, the 90 day portion of the plan. Like I said, we broke it into 30 and 60 and 90 days because I wanted to make sure that no one got overwhelmed. Um, but the HR portion of it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I include the eight things that you are going to need as you start to build out your actual HR department. Because again, you start your business, your business starts small. It doesn't mean that you're going to remain small unless that's your goal. And that's perfectly fine. That's up to you. But if you're trying to grow your business and you're trying to establish something that is going to be able to operate without you as well, then these are the important fundamentals you need to know. And my final, final tip, which I'm not going to expand upon too much is, <clears throat> excuse me, is making sure that you put together what I call an, an SM, SMSPP plan. Super, super simple. S is your social media. M is your marketing. P, the S, I'm sorry. Let's backtrack, guys. Let's backtrack. Okay. Sales, marketing, social media, PR, and promotion. Okay. Let's do that again. Sales, marketing, social media, PR, and promotional plans. Those five combined are the basic plans that you need to be able to think about your revenue generating activities for your business. So a lot of people, again, the, all three, is, as you guys can see, we have the business foundational plan and revenue model. It's a plan. You have an operational plan that we talked about, which was tip number two. It's a plan. Your SMSPP is a plan. Each of these plans have different roles for your business, but if you don't plan properly, first of all, I've, I've always said this and I will emphasize this again, business is, is always moving and it's always changing consistently. You are never going to always be prepared for every single thing that gets thrown at you. But if you plan, if you plan, then at least you usually will be prepared enough to be in a position where you can handle those unexpected challenges or hurdles that you may come across. And then also 
by reading my book, 90 Days to CEO, because I share so much of my business mishaps in here, if you ever came across those mishaps, then you will know how to be prepared. But again, a lot of people have a mentality where they think that you, you create a product or you come up with a service, like, oh, I'm gonna offer services to people for graphics design, okay? Then they think that because they put up an ad on social media or you tell a couple of friends and family, then that automatically me means that you're gonna make money. You know how many people I've seen where I've said, because I'm now like, especially now that I've written this book, I'm like constantly digging down in people's head when it comes to business. And I'm like, guys, um, so how's your business going? How's this project that you said you were working on going? Oh, girl, you know, um, it didn't end up taking off. And I'm like, why not? Well, you know, we were posting every day on social media and we were barely making sales. I sold like one item in a week and I'm like, okay. So you gave up because you posted on social one time a day and you weren't making sales and you think that that's enough? You guys, it's not. That's not enough. You have to make sure you understand those five components and those five plans. It's just sitting down and coming up with it, brainstorming, thinking it through, then plugging it into either your calendar or a project management system and you run with the plan. But you can't just be out here just... Um, wandering aimlessly that's not how you run a business you have to understand okay so what is my marketing plan you plan to make sales but okay what's your sales plan like what is it oh for social media i'm just gonna post once a day okay but what's your social media plan it's not just about what content you're gonna post how does that content then relate to the goals that you've set for your business for that year or have you not set any goals for your business for that year so it's being intentional and I know that I guess that key topic keeps coming up and I keep saying intentional, but intentionality, you guys, is one of the key things in running a business. It is your responsibility as a CEO to make sure that you do your best to plan and prepare for your business success. And none of us know everything. I remember when I started, um, I remember when I started Allocate and the biggest thing for me was all right, well, I created these amazing products and now it's like, oh my gosh, wait, I have a business now. Well, actually at the time I had a brand and I'm like, okay, well, what do I need? And I would come across certain um, opportunities and they're like, oh, do you have your, your this and this certification? And I'm like, no. So then I have to run and go research because I didn't even know that it was something that I needed. Then I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I get that thing? It was so much trial and error, you guys, and there was so much not knowing and i think one of the things that was difficult for me was a lot of people were not as forthcoming and open when it comes to sharing information there were not a lot of people who were reaching back to say hey oh so you need to find someone to sign off on x y and z oh just call this company they do this or oh you're trying to source um a custom box for your business oh this is where you go this is how you find this no it was a lot of trial and error and I just believe that I've gotten over so many things and I've accomplished so much I've been in business since I was tw I've been self-employed since I was 22 years old when I graduated college I was supposed to go to law school but my business allocate naturals took off and I needed to just keep my hands on the wheel and just keep pushing so I have never since college actually had to work, <clears throat> excuse me, had to work for someone else. But being self-employed for the past 11 years, you guys, doesn't mean that it's been an easy cakewalk. But I think that a lot of the things that I've learned can help so many people out there if you're just only willing to learn it and to apply it to your business and to your life. I don't think that now that I have become successful that I will ever forget what it was like feeling frustrated in the beginning, feeling like I didn't have any help, I didn't have any support, nobody was tell helping me with anything and I felt lost. Well, this is why I'm hoping that this is me reaching a hand back and saying, hey you, come on, like come with me. Like you can do this, I did this, you can too. So that was my real main purpose, you guys, of writing my book, 90 Days to CEO, is to really ensure that more people have the tools to get over these hurdles because a lot of people are not out here sharing this information. And I remember when I was working on this book um, with my editor um, and team, 
it was like, oh my God, Rochelle, you're gonna put that in there and you're gonna put that in there? Oh, that's awesome, wow, this is good. And I'm like, yeah, I'm putting everything in there. I'm putting everything in there. I'm looking at my younger self and saying, what, what do I wish someone told me or taught me in the beginning? And it's like, okay, here, here you go. This is literally mentorship in a book. This can help you, okay? So I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me, now, da, 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 da. All right. Okay, so we're going to, I'm going to read you a page from chapter nine, um, opening up shop, and then I'm going to move on to your questions. I have three questions on my phone from you guys, and so far one person has asked a question below. We have 10 more minutes before we wrap up today's session, so I will answer your questions in that time. So I have three on my phone, one here. Make sure that you, um, make sure if you have a question, you ask it below. All right, so I'm gonna read just a quick page from opening up shop. So chapter nine. So it says that, and again, you guys, this is a 422 page book. So chapter nine starts on page 213, okay? So if you've made it this far in the book, congratulations. So far, you've established your why, you've laid down your roots and branches, and you've conditioned your mind for the messy middle of running a business, you've popped the boss babe balloon and brushed up on the importance of self-care as an entrepreneur. You've learned the ins and outs of my business journey and it is my sincerest hope that my story can serve as an example to you along your own path. However, I know firsthand that you need more than just an example. As a fledging business owner, you need more than success stories and inspiration. You need practical, actual advice, actionable steps and tips to get your business out of your head and bring it to reality. I meet so many aspiring business owners who have the vision and dedication down pat, but they just need more directed guidance. They wish someone would just sit them down and tell them what it really takes to finally open up shop. Well, me, your business fairy godmother is here and your wish is my command. All right, so let's see here. Da, 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 da. Okay, in this next two chapters, we'll be going over the exact steps you need to, you need to take to get your business up and running. We'll cover everything from naming your business, securing the right legal licenses and titles, securing vendors and building solid team of employees. And of course, all of this information, all of this information comes from my husband and my own professional experience. We guarantee that your steps will be, we cannot guarantee that your steps will exactly be the same as ours because every company and every entrepreneur is different. Even the regulations for opening up and running a company will vary in different states and countries. But still, we've learned a lot of pertinent information that is that will be pretty useful and business hacks that we can teach you along the way. And it is my pleasure to share them with you. So without further ado, break out your pen, paper, and highlighter, and let's get down to business. Okay? So... That was an excerpt from chapter nine of 90 Days to CEO. Again, you guys, my book is available right now for pre-order on Amazon and also on barnesandnoble.com. It starts shipping out on Tuesday. So if you pre-order today, it starts shipping out on Tuesday. All right, so I'm gonna answer, <clears throat> I'm gonna answer your questions now that you guys sent in. I have three questions and anyone else who has a question, just go ahead and drop it below um, and I will we'll answer for you. Okay, so Tonya P. Carter says, how did you prepare financially, personal and business to start a business? Okay, so that's a big question. Um, that's a heavy question. Um, there's a lot that you need to do to prepare. So when it comes to the business and the financial preparation, um, as I just mentioned, we talk about that in chapter nine, um, specifically to understand what financial preparation that I did. Um, financial preparation is in, oh goodness guys. Financial preparation I is in on page 264. I tell you exactly 
what I did. Um, but as far as my startup money, if that's the specific question, um, I didn't have startup money and we didn't have an investor. I literally, I tell the story all the time, but I, I earned a hundred dollars, picked up an extra shift at Olive Garden one weekend from my coworker, Tiffany. And I used that hundred dollars to actually buy the ingredients, the bottles and the labels to make my first batch of essential 17 hair growth oil, which now is you know, the number one best-selling product in Ali K Naturals line that's now sold in Target, Walmart, CVS, Rite Aid, all of that. And it all started with that $100. Now, why did I need that $100? Because I knew that I needed the money to make these extra bottles to sell to people who were asking them, but I also had rent to pay and I had bills to pay. And so I couldn't just say, okay, well, I'm not gonna pay my rent because I wanna mix some oils up. I had to find a way to make that extra money. So one of the things that I do talk about as well in 90 Days to CEO is giving you different options that you can think about other ways that you can make money to start your business when you don't have investors or anyone to help you. The one thing that I can say for sure though is I was extremely disciplined with my money. I know a lot of people, when they start making money, they start to eat out of their business's piggy bank. Like they start to just use it for all of their miscellaneous stuff. And what kept our business, um, we're able to bootstrap for 10 years, well, 11 years. Let me see. Yeah, for 11 years. Well, we started the business in 2009, registered 2010. Um, so yeah, 11 years in business, we're still debt free. We don't have any loans. We don't have credit card debts. We don't have investors. We're sold in 26, probably 27 countries as of last week. Um, we're sold in 27 countries. We manufacture our own products here for Allocate Naturals from scratch. And let me just tell you, none of that was accidental. We t I talk about how disciplined my husband is and how he runs our company's money um, and how we were able to bootstrap in the book as well because you have to be really disciplined. You have to make sure that anything that comes in to your business, especially when you don't have anywhere else that additional money or revenues is gonna come from, you gotta pay yourself maybe, or you have employees to pay, you have invoices to pay and whatever, you have to be extremely disciplined in the way that you manage your finances. And I do teach about that as well. Um, and then how did I prepare personally? We talk about that. That actually you'll learn about in chapter three called The Messy Middle and also in chapter five on self-care. I had to think which chapter. Um, so Tanya, those questions will be answered. Um, organically, Chris asked, what extra steps should a young entrepreneur 13 to 19 take when starting a business? Um, I would say if you're that young, kudos to you, first of all. I think that is amazing. I didn't start my first well, I started Allocate when I was, what, 22? Or is it 21? 21 or 22. I think 22. But I started Naya Money Chic when I was 21. So, And then I actually owned another business before that that you'll hear about that nobody knows about when I was 20. So, um, so I totally get it, being a young entrepreneur. Um, I think that the most important thing at that age is you're going to have to learn a lot of DIYs, right? I want you to make sure that you don't put a lot of pressure on yourself to think that you need a lot of money to be able to do whatever business idea it is that you have. I need you to take the time to teach yourself how to do as many things as possible. So when you're that young, assuming if you don't have a part-time job, if you do though, then that's excellent. If you do have like a little weekend job or something like that, or some other way that you're able to, maybe if your parents are giving you allowance, I'm not sure your situation, Find a way to use that as your seed money. That's the money that you're going to plant that is going to flourish into an amazing business. If you don't have a, a side job, so you guys, I have been working. My first job I got when I was 14 years old. So it's funny that she, the person brings up this, um, this age. Let me just show you guys. So here in my office at Allie K Naturals headquarters, I have this in a frame. This is a letter that I wrote to my first boss when I was 14 years old. I wrote this November 14th, 2001. Um, this is when I got my first job that I wasn't even supposed to have. 
but I wanted to be able to find a way to help make my make some money to help my mom to pay bills at the house and to pay for me to join track. So at 14, I got my first job working at a daycare and literally a week after, a couple days after being at this job, I was asking and begging Miss Patsy for more hours. And that's what this letter is. Me begging Miss Patsy to let me work more because if I knew, like the thing is y'all, I've just always been that person. I'm like, listen, I'm working for it. I'm not asking anyone, I can do this. I'm gonna find a way to make this money. But I know, I'm like, well, if I work more hours, I can make more money and then I can put it into doing what I want to do. Um, so that's really what I would say is find a way to earn the money or save the money to start your business. But I also want you to remember to DIY. You gotta be a hard worker, especially when you're this young, you're going to have to work hard. So when it comes to the graphics, don't worry about, oh my God, I can't afford a graphics designer. You better go and Google and learn how to use Canva or go learn how to use free version of Photoshop or something. Teach yourself everything. That's what I did in the beginning. I taught myself everything because when you're this young, you a lot of the times don't have the ability to maybe generate you know, additional income to maybe hire small and then work your way up. I taught myself how to make my first website. I taught myself, excuse me, how to do as many things as possible because I didn't have money to pay people. So the final thing that I would say that you should do is to educate yourself. And again, I believe that my book, 90 Days to CEO, is perfect for all ages. So if you guys are watching this and you know a young, aspiring entrepreneur, a teenpreneur or something, this could be an amazing book for them um, as well to really inspire them and give them the tools to really understand business. Like these are the things that you usually are like, wait, business school can't even teach you what I taught you in this book. And that's to be honest, because business is business school is typically all about just the textbook part of it, which I do teach you as well. But I also teach you real life and practical advice that has been tried and true because I've been through it. Um, and then the final thing organically, Chris, I would say is to make sure that you get your mind right. Okay, your friends and family, and this is not going to be the only venture in your life that you, people may doubt you. But I want you to remember that if you want it bad enough, then you will not let people's opinions of your idea stop you, okay? You have to take this serious, but please, please make sure your schoolwork doesn't take back seat, okay? Because you being this young, 13 to 19 means you're still in school. Your education is key. Your education is important. So still make sure when you're in school, you're getting the grades you need to, but you're really gonna have to buckle down and take this seriously because not only are you gonna prove those doubters wrong, you're here to prove yourself right, okay? All right, final question on here, and then I'll take your one question you guys have here. Um, oh, hi, Organically Chris. I'm happy that you joined. I'm hopefully you, you like that answer. Oh, you're welcome. All right, covered by T. How did you find the right outlets to connect to get the right exposure? Okay, so to be honest, covered by T, exposure typically is considered as PR in business. Um, and I do talk about PR and how to do your own PR um, in the beginning stages of your business. I talk about that in chap chapter 10. Oh, goodness. Um, in 90 Days to CEO. We talk about PR in chapter 10. I'm trying to find where, um, but we do talk about it in chapter 10. Um, I talk about how to do PR yourself and then what to look for when you actually hire your first publicist. And then how, um, when you're doing PR yourself, how you can actually reach like magazines and major publications pretty much with a no budget budget, a, a $0 PR budget. So um, I definitely will teach you that. but. With that being said, and that's in chapter 10, but with that being said, another thing that people should think about when it comes to exposure, you don't wanna expose yourself when you're not ready, okay? So instead, in the beginning, instead of thinking exposure like, man, I wanna be on TV, I wanna, I mean, how many, wait, it's 11 years, I'm like 11 years into business and my first TV commercial, I just got, finally. Like, it's not overnight, okay? So I'm melting right now when everyone's sending me these videos of um, my commercial for Alley K Naturals with Target. Target's Black Beyond Measure, Black History Month feature, and I'm all over y'all's TVs right now, and I'm like, oh my God, this is amazing! And I'm celebrating that moment, but just know, Chris, um, I'm sorry, covered by T, it took 11 years to accomplish that. 
So exposure doesn't come overnight, but you also just want to be prepared. That's it. Be prepared. Do the work. Make sure your business is right. Make sure you have those foundational tools and fundamentals that we talked about. Make sure that your business is operating in the standard that you need to. Make sure you are ready. Because let me tell you, when that exposure comes, if you don't look the part, then nothing is going to happen and actually can turn into being a detriment. If you're not prepared when that exposure comes, then it can cause a negative effect instead of a positive effect. So stay, in the beginning of my building my company, I wasn't focused on exposure. I wasn't focused on, oh my God, I need to get press and I need magazines to talk about me and stuff. No, I was focused on doing the work. I was like, man, I wanna make amazing natural hair products and they need to be quality and they need to work. I focused on making such a darn good product that the world could not ignore it. That's what I focused on. I focused on serving my customer. I focused on what was her needs, what are his needs, what is he missing, what are people, how are people not serving him, how can I serve he or she better. I focused on my customer and my product and my business and the exposure came when it came. But when you are at the point that you are going to get exposure you just want to make sure that you're showing up at your best okay but I could totally teach you how to do your own PR in my book 90 days to CEO all right so now let me scoot closer and answer you guys' final questions there's only one question okay good <clears throat> let's answer this all right so you your question is let's see who asked oh crap okay Will pre-orders from Amazon ship on Tuesday? Yes, pre-orders on Amazon should be shipping out on Tuesday. Uh, hi, Dar. Um, pre-orders from Amazon should ship out on Tuesday. If latest, then they should start shipping on Wednesday. Um, I will definitely follow up with Amazon, but typically I have pre-ordered things before and they on release day is when they start shipping. And our release day is Tuesday. All right, so that's question for Juanita. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 guys, hold on one second. Uh, hold on. I just want to make sure. Uh, okay. Okay. And then I already answered this one for covered by T. Okay. All right, guys. So, yeah. Hi. Hi. All right, guys. So um, thank you guys again for joining today's session. I really, really, aw, thank you, thank you. One of our retailers, HUB, is on watching, thank you. And so all the Texas Naturals, make sure you go to HUB and pick up Alec Naturals, because I said so. Um, but you guys, thank you so much for joining today's CEO Lunch and Learn session. I hope that you enjoyed the information that was given in today's session. Yes, this video is going to be available for, for replay, so I'm going to save it as soon as I finish. Also, this is going to be uploaded to YouTube tonight. So if you want to share this video with someone who may not have Instagram and they need to watch this or any of the other Lunch and Learns, they can hop on YouTube. Um, this will be updated by my team tonight probably i would say by six o'clock today um and again the three things that we talked about i'm not going to go into them because you should have been here folks building the proper foundation okay and plan with your revenue model including a revenue model secondly your operational plan and number three your smspp plan for your business all right, thank you guys so, so much. Yes, I will definitely save this live. I'm happy you appreciate it. Um, I'm here to not just inspire, I'm here to pass on knowledge, you guys. Like, this is what this is about. Each one, teach one. I strongly believe in this. Also, even though I am a woman, okay, with fabulous hair, darling, and all these things, don't be fooled. This book is not just for women. This book is also for men who are wanting to start a business as well or who have a business and need some more guidance. That's what I'm here for. I'm your business fairy godmother. And after you read this book, you will know exactly why. All right, guys. So thank you again. Available right now on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Thank you. And I will see you for tomorrow's CEO Lunch and Learn session. Bye.